Welcome to the New Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubenstein here with Todd Murray. And Todd, the WVU women's basketball team made a run to the Big 12 Tournament Championship game and lost in a heartbreaker to Baylor. And I guess to start off with here before Selection Monday, how much does that loss to Baylor hurt uh, WVU seed? Does it really do much uh, in terms of the NCAA conversation? Well, certainly a win would have helped, but I, I don't think a loss did too much, uh, you know, to hurt them. I think. You know, they came into the tournament. They were, you know, either a two or a three seed, depending on you know how you want to look at it. Uh, they just didn't want to do anything to to drop into a four mm. or five, which would have meant getting upset early on. You know, once they got to the championship, I think uh, you know, regardless of what had happened against Baylor, that yeah, I think they're pretty much set. You'll you'll see them as either a, a two or three seed in the tournament when the pairings come out on Monday. Something that we've discussed is where they're going to define themselves uh, location-wise. And it seems like from where we've gone through things, there's, there's very few, really if any, sites that they're not going to be playing on somebody's home floor, even though they're going to be at two or three, which means they're going to be playing on a six or seven. Is that still the case here? Or are there are there any opportunities for them to find themselves on a neutral site? I would say probably very slim being on a neutral site. If you look at uh, who's hosting this year, uh, as you kind of go through the sites, it seems like Iowa City, Iowa, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana would pop up as likely destinations. I think at one time it was Chapel Hill, but North Carolina has kind of made a little bit of a push here toward the end of the season and end of the tournament. That's would probably be unlikely to see them in Chapel Hill. So, you know, again, you're you're probably looking at you know a second round matchup against an Iowa or an LSU, uh, you know, on their home court. How big of a deal is that? Uh, is th this team's played well on the road? It is the NCAA tournament. How, how much of a difference th does that really make? I mean, is is, is that a deal breaker there, or what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't think for this team. I mean, you know, when you play that Big 12 schedule, you play every team in the league on their home courts, and there's some really tough places to play. You know, an Iowa State, a Baylor, an Oklahoma State, and they've won it at all three of those places this year. And and, and if you look at uh, you know the NCAA women's tournament over the last seven or eight years, the the, the highest seeded team has won the majority of the time, even mm -hmm. if they're on somebody else's home court. So I don't, I don't think that's going to phase them very much. Let's look at the the bigger picture with this WV women's basketball team. Uh, putting in perspective what they've accomplished during the regular season in the conference tournament, and have, have they written the story of their legacy or? Is what uh, what happens in the NCAA tournament really what's going to to be remembered about this team? Yeah, I think ultimately, uh, you know, fairly or not, uh, you know, what they do in the NCAA tournament is ultimately going to define this team. And you know, you look at they they could end up with 30 wins, a school record, but if they were to fall in the second round, I I, I don't think you could uh, look at this season as anything but a disappointment. I, I know that sounds harsh, but. You know that is how you know how fans ultimately look back on the year, and, uh, and that's why they're you know they're really trying to make a push here to to mm -hmm. get over that second round hump this year and uh, and see see what they could do at a Sweet 16. How do you think they'll handle the pressure? Because this is a team that has found itself in a lot of close games in a quality about it that we've discussed throughout the season kind of it, it doesn't seem like they really care how many points they're down by uh, different points in the second half or even if they build a lead and the opposing team com completely comes back they've never really been rattled but when they enter the NCAA tournament I mean they know that uh, more so than any other year there, there's kind of this this big expectation that this is the West Virginia team that has a chance to really make some noise so how do you think they're going to handle that pressure? I, I think with having so, so many seniors, so many upperclassmen that it, it wouldn't be as big a deal if this were a young team and and you're right they've they've played a bunch of close games and managed to win most of them they they came up short in the uh, Big 12 title game against mm -hmm. Baylor. I mean, some folks might argue that that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Maybe, you know, get that out of the way. You had the loss. You know, now go into the NCAA tournament. I know Mike Terry told the players after the day, you know, you know, remember that feeling going down the stretch. We didn't execute. We've got to execute from here on out. And. Uh, and, and I think they will for the move. I'd be surprised if they don't once they get into the NCAA tournament. 
last one for you. If WVU does make a little noise, say makes a Sweet 16 or beyond, where is Mike Carey in the National Coach of the Year conversation in your mind? Yeah, I, th I think certainly he will get some support. I mean, this is a tough year because you've got Gino Oriema at Connecticut and Muffet sure. McGraw who are undefeated, and it's kind of hard not to <laughs> reward coaches for excellence. And uh, yeah. undefeated is a you, you can't improve on an undefeated record. So that would be you know tough for for Mike as far as Coach of the Year. But uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't get some support for that. All right, very good. Todd, appreciate your time you. once again, and please continue to check thedpost.com for the latest on the Mountaineers. Thanks for watching today.